In previous videos, I have covered quite extensively cell masks or phone mask components, such as the panels on the top, so sort of the antennas, as well as the sort of backhaul technology, so microwave fibre and so on. But what I haven't really covered so much is the kind of ancillary technology that you find on a phone mast which is necessary to support its transmission specifically getting signal from the actual broadcasting radio sort of at the base of the tower to the actual antenna panels at the top so first things first i'm going to speak about mhas slash tmas so they're basically the acronyms mean master amps or tower mount amplifiers so they are kind of what they say on tin, they're amplifiers. So their job is to increase the sensitivity of the mast and therefore meaning the mast can cover a wider area. Now these are usually fairly small, or at least they look fairly small, uh, white boxes that have generally have two bits of cat's cable going in and two going out because each input to the antenna is two cables and each input to the master amp is therefore two cables because of plus minus 45 degree stuff. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk about on the mast is our RETs which is an acronym for remote electrical tilt. So what they do through a variety of mechanisms is basically alter the tilt of the mast so make it from kind of vertical to then slant in a certain direction to kind of focus coverage in a certain area that kind of needs it most and also because when you have multiple masts in, a, in an area trying to get them all aligned first time is a bit of a challenge you don't really want to send an engineer up the mast every time because it's very costly very time consuming and potentially it means that you have to actually turn the mast off which is a very big no-no so generally on things like Catherine antennas and Comscope ones, they the RETs are generally these uh, little sort of cuboidal things, sort of cylindrical cuboidal things that are at the base of the panel, usually in front of the antenna inputs, but they can be sort of surrounded by antenna inputs in a whole variety of different arrangements depending on the antenna manufacturer itself. Usually, they're fed off these quite small cables which are connected to the master head amps because the master amps have sort of passed through for the RETs. And the final mask component that I'm going to talk about briefly is the RIUs, which are something a bit sort of new. You generally see them on upgraded 4G sites rather than so much of 2G and 3G sites. And what RIU stands for is Remote Radio Unit. And they're also called RRH, which is Remote Radio Head. But what they basically do is bring the radio, the transmitting radio, from meters, tens of meters potentially below the antennas up to sort of right next to the antennas. So that way you don't get so much loss in the cables. So that potentially means that you save on having to require such thick cables, but it can also help with sensitivity and things like that as well. Now these remote radios are generally fibre fed, which is why you see multiple thin sort of almost cables going into them. Um, and then also obviously a power as well. And then just what comes out of the RIU is say two thin coax cables to then go into the relevant input on the antenna panel. So um, the RIUs generally single frequency and yet you generally see one for each sector of a mast. So on a three sector mast you'll often see three unless the mast has separate operators using the same panels in which case you can have six and there can all there can all sorts of combinations that you can potentially have with RIUs um, but you do see them pretty often on Vodafone and O2 sites now and I guess the final thing that I can think of is the actual coax cable itself so this is obviously what carries the signals from the transmitting radio to the panels and this coax cable is significantly thicker than your household garden variety coax because this has got to carry tens of watts of transmitting power and it's also got to be very low loss because of course 
the, your, fo your phone talking to the mast can't actually be sort of outputting that much power. So you can't have loss in the cable. You can't have significant loss in the cable. So the, the coax cables are very thick, and they have very thick copper inside and foam layers, and it it's quite it's very rigid cable, I must say. But I mean, like I said, you generally have thicker cable going up the mast because that has to be lower low loss to the mast and amplifiers, and then from the mast to the amplifiers to the panels itself, you generally have much thinner coax, which is more like what you'd have in your house because. For a start, you don't want to have excessively rigid cable feeding into the antenna panels because it makes sort of bending it and fitting it onto the mast more difficult and therefore potentially could risk damage to the antenna panels themselves just trying to fit the cable onto the structure around the mast and connecting up the cable. So that's why they generally use thinner coax from there on. But um, I hope you've enjoyed this little run through over additional phone mast, electronic and ancillary supporting equipment and I'll see you on the next one.